everyone, it's Nicole, and I, I'm here with another layout using the Marks & Company's Chiricaco kit. It is the 22nd layout I got done with this kit, and it took me an hour and 37 minutes to complete. I am down to my scraps, and I'm trying to use more pattern paper as my background. And these are some um, Amy Tangerine epoxy borders that were from the cut and paste collection I'm trying to match up some inks that I'd like to I like I want to get two tones of different inks so like a, a lighter brown and a darker brown so I'm just seeing if the tone of browns are the same so I'm going to go with two hero arts uh, colors and one soft brown and the other one is cup of joe and then I'm going to go with two uh, tones of blue and then two tones of gr uh, pink so this is a picture of me and my grandson we when we were apple picking I'm going to use this flea market crate paper from Maggie Holmes as my background and it is the second sheet of pattern paper that I use from this kit and now I took out my Maggie Holmes uh, project life cards and I'm just going through and seeing what cards you know might fit or coordinate with this with this layout I'm just trying to find a few cards just to layer them around the page just to add something different because I've been using this kit for quite a bit of layouts so I'm just trying to do a little bit more variety so this is my new um, Maggie Holmes kit that I just got last week at Michael's so now I'm going through this kit here trying to see if there's any cards that will coordinate and I love using these cards as um, extra elements on my background it just adds so much to the background you can you know use it as a journaling card or you can use it as a place to build your embellishment clusters um, you can punch from it stamp on it and I'm, I think I'm going to do a lot of all that with this layout so now I'm going through my four by six and again I'm just pulling out cards that I think looks good like will coordinate with the layout now I'm looking through the cut and paste collection and that's just a mini kit from Project Life also. And I'm just pulling anything that has some brown in it or um, a little bit of brown and blue is basically uh, what I'm pulling out. I think I pulled out maybe one or two that had a little bit of pink but most of them had browns or blue tones. And I just wanted to add so I could use my cards as part of my layering. So I'm just using the scraps, uh, basically the size that they are. And I'm just going to lay out some Project Life cards so it kind of makes a background for my layout. Or for my, for my photo, not my layout. So I'm going to play around a little bit with all the different ways that I can add cards and pattern papers and again I'm just trying to use up um, this was the first time that I used that pattern paper I just I mean it's a chevron and I love chevron but the tone of pink that was in that chevron just did not coordinate with anything else in the kit like it just didn't it was like that gray pattern paper I found that plain pink depending where I cut it it kind of fit but uh, depend because it was sort of a ombre effect of that pattern paper so I, I kind of found a spot where it it went okay as long as it was in small doses so I'm going to cut that card in two and I'm actually going to end up moving do I move that around? I think it's going to be a little different than it is right now by the time I start gluing everything down. And that happens a lot. Like I'll, because I'm going to have to remove everything because I'm going to do uh, the template. 
So I'm taking a picture with my iPhone and a lot of times I just forget to even look back at my iPhone and see what I've taken. And I don't think that it really matters. I just think that uh, sometimes after I look at the page, I'm like, oh, I really like the way it was the first time and then I moved it. But I mean, it still looks okay the way you know it ends up but I can't remember if this layout here if I end up moving it or if I end up gluing most of the layers down together just not down to the background paper so that I can um, do my template and I think what I did was I actually put um, ATG tape so I would remember where it was but I'm um, I think I did this layout about uh, four or five days ago so uh. so now I'm going to use a couple of templates the first one is from the crafters workshop and I'm going to use two uh, pure arts ink in like the bluish turquoise and the first one is called mint julep and then I'm going to take the tide pro blue and just add a little bit of um, almost like shadowing to the side of the circles just so that there's two tones on the circle and you probably um, can't see it on the video but in person and now that it's dried for a few days you can really tell because what happens with uh, pure arts is when you first apply it it's really deep the color and then as it dries up it does two things it smooths out because when you first stamp it it looks kind of blotchy uh, or ink it, it looks kind of blotchy. It smooths out and it becomes lighter. So now I'm going to use a Heidi Swap template and it's um, butterflies. And now I'm going to use um, two types of pink and they're both um, Stampin' Up inks. I'm not sure if I still have them around. I'm actually doing um, this voiceover, it's, it's over a few days. I did. Um, about four or five days ago I did the first part of the voiceover and then I had to stop and now I'm tonight we're Sunday January 25th or 26th and um, I actually started the voiceover like last Wednesday or Thursday but um, just haven't had a chance to you know to get it done um, we had a ton of hockey this weekend so we thinned up the hockey rink. Uh, so now I'm going to do on the background, I'm going to do two tones of brown, and one of them is a soft brown. So I'm going to do the butterflies in that first, and then I'm going to take one of my Kaiser Arts uh, stamps, and it's just writing, and I'm just going to ink it up with the cup of joe and I'm going to stamp over top and then that way there's it looks really uh, nice and distressed I really like that look and then I'm going to do the same thing with the pink butterflies I used a light pink to do the bottom layer and I just use a sponge so it's not heavy inked it's just nicely inked and lightly and then I used a deeper pink and I stamped over top. And I'm going to do that at the bottom right and then at the top left of the layout. And what this does, it actually almost uh, looks like you have layers on your layout and it's flat. So it, it adds so much dimension to your layout and it's all flat. And I really like that. And um, and it's funny because I got a, I wish I had that close, maybe I do. I had someone say um, on my last, one of my last videos that she really has a hard time um, stamping on her layouts. And, and if I, you know, challenged me um, to, to use more stamps on the layouts and this, There we go. It's from Paula Kelly, and she says, "Thanks, Nicole. Just curious if you let if you're like me and find it challenging to use stamps on your on layouts. I have lots of stamps from Studio Calico kits, but I find there are so many choices, 
in embellishments that my stamps get neglected oftentimes. Happy face. Would you like to, would love to see you use some stamping on your layout if you're up for the challenge. And actually this layout was actually done before um, I got so okay so it was looking really choppy and I checked and the recording had stopped and it's a good thing that it kind of got that way because the last four minutes you're going to see um, a change it's going to sound like I'm further away and it's because for some reason it didn't take that I was using my iMic from um, for my from my MacBook and what it is it's just an attachment so that you can add a mic <clears throat> or a headset and you can talk into it so that you don't have to use the mic that's on your computer <clears throat> because you almost have to be sitting on top of the computer for it to record actually what you're saying. So anyway, it didn't take it for some reason. So it was using my computer mic. So the, the volume on the last four minutes will be really low and that's why. So now I'm ready to put the page together. And the reason that I moved that brown uh, Project Life card is because I didn't want to cover up those butterflies so I'm going to end up moving it to the right and then to the bottom left and that was the main reason I thought you know I spent all that time using the template and using the inks to make that background I don't want to cover it up so I'm going to put the cards off to the right instead so now I'm going to use some Copic markers in brown and I'm going to color in those uh, chipboard asterisks and I really like the way the brown turned out because it actually looks like it's wood grain um, just because it you know has two three tones on it because it t it took the ink more in one area than the other and I really like that and I'm almost all used up those um, asterisks I do have on that little sheet there I have a few uh, sequin stars but that's not part of that embellishment I just set it on top of there because I thought maybe I was going to use it for this um, page but I didn't end up using it so I went to get something to drink because <laughs> I was thirsty and there was just a little bit left in that two liter so I just brought it with me so that I could finish it up I was uh, scrapping this one really quite late at night and um, so I guess I was a little thirsty I had another question and it was from uh, from the Becca JB she says great layout when you do process videos what speed do you set it at or on and again I use iMovie and the iMovie setting um, <clears throat> there is um, preset ones I guess and when you go under clip you can select the whole video and you can mute the vi mute all the clips so that I can be listening to something else while I'm doing this so that it's actually when I'm recording the page it's actually recording whether I'm watching another YouTube video or I'm watching you know a TV show or whatever it is so I mute all the sound off my video and then under clip again it says fast forward and it gives me four options two times the speeds four times eight times or 20 times 20 times it would be like ridiculously fast it would be more like a cartoony kind of thing so it depends on the speed how long it takes me to, t to do the video this video took me an hour and 37 minutes I probably use the 8 speed uh, because it was so long now if the video takes or the page takes me an hour then I'll do the 4 speed and then it it's like 15 minutes and so it, it all depends how long it takes for the layout to complete for me to decide uh, what speed I'm gonna do the I'm gonna convert the layout to now I wish I had I, I'm trying to research if there was any way that I could do six speed because I would love that 
uh, because a long video, I think I would love six better than eight, but I haven't figured out how to do it because it's not there as an option. And I don't know if it's just because my computer's three years old and I kind of figure it's the version of iMovie that I had or I have um, just doesn't offer that. So for now, that's that's what I'm using and I'm hoping one day to get another Mac. So hopefully by then I can, you know, figure out how to do different speeds. So now I'm looking for some of these little wood veneers that or letters first that came in the kit and I didn't have all the letters to do the letters that I wanted and then now I'm looking for these are Studio Calico wood veneer letters and they came in a previous kit and I'm gonna find all the letters to do it and then I decide to go a different way in the end. So I hope um, the Becca JB that that answers your questions it's it's really um, unless you have a Mac it's really hard to understand or you know to know what I'm talking about and I don't own um, I haven't worked with a PC in over three years so anything that would be um, that you would need a piece any software that would be for a PC I have no idea because I only started making process videos a year ago and um, I had my Mac since then so I don't know how many which other software you can use but I know that Gina Beth she has a little video and she has a PC so maybe anybody that has questions about what kind of software and how to use it you can go back in her videos and you can find that and I mean I didn't watch it because I don't have a PC so but I remember her putting up um, a video about how to um, how to upload a video to it and how to process it and make it so that you can you know condense it and cut it cut some stuff out and, and all this stuff so that you can upload it to YouTube so I took out some of these um, white tiny letters from Kelly Perky and I love them I bought maybe I think I have six six of them in white because I know then I can change the color and what I do is I just put it on wax paper so that way I don't contaminate the rest of the letters and I just color the letters that I want and at first I took the cup of joe and I found it too dark so then I went for the soft brown and colored in the letters I cut down that uh, it was a 3 by 4 card that actually came from the back side of uh, pattern paper and I just cut it down because it was too big and it was covering too much of my bottom um, journaling card that I want to put a little bit of journaling and I'm actually going to put the whole title or what I thought was going to be the whole, whole title right there below the photo and then all of a sudden the video is going to flip and I'm going to come back and the title is going to move because uh, <clears throat> while I walked away from the title I thought oh you know where I have my little monkey dot 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 I could I could actually do a subtitle so I'm going to move the title at the top of the page and then I'm going to put the subtitle at the bottom and these are um, the speech bubbles that came from the pebbles sheet and I cut out three little speech bubbles and the the one right there I love you I forgot to glue it on the page so I believe you're gonna see it or maybe you're not but I think it might be there for the pictures at the end but if it's not it's actually going to be exactly where I put it right there on the page uh, I'm just gonna punch a butterfly a little later on and the I love you is going to be similar to where it is right now it's going to be a little bit more to the right of the page but at least you know that I I did end up putting it on the page now I'm going to use some of this border, epoxy border from Amy Tangerine. I only had maybe a five inch strip left, not even that, maybe four. And I cut it down in three pieces and I'm going to spread it around the page. Now I had done a, a sample test with that butterfly with the inks and the template. So I'm just going to punch it out and I'm going to end up using it at the top of the layout. And this is where 
you know, I kind of went away and then I thought, oh, that'd be nice. I'd love the title to go up there. So I, I had moved already the title because I wasn't going to move it back and back and forth. So I just left it there and I punched out a butterfly and I did the same technique. I inked it in the light brown and then I'm going to stamp it with the darker brown. And I'm going to use that right there on the layout at the bottom. And then there was another piece of that three by four card and I just want to use it on the layout so it was somewhere else on the layout because I have it at the top that's the one that I punched the butterfly out so I just want it somewhere else on the layout so I just punched a little piece and I stuck it right there underneath the butterfly just sort of in a place to to ground the embellishments uh, where the butterfly is and then I'm going to use that little speech bubble that says hey there so then my title is going to be hey there little monkey because I call them my my monkey and I call them a monkey even before he was born because um, she said she was pretty sure she wanted to call him Mason so uh, I just found a name for him that started with M and it was monkey and it stuck to him <laughs> and I also call him baby M and um, it's so funny because he wasn't even born and I was already, you know, thinking of what, what you know, his nicknames were going to be. So um, I knew it was going to be Monkey, Baby M, and then as he gets older and he's going to play hockey, I'm going to call him MJ because his last name is Jones. So <laughs> Mason Jones, so MJ. And uh, they just think I'm weird. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted nicknames. I have nicknames for all my kids. Um... I just, it, them it was easy because I just added E at the end. So I have, you know, Katie, Jesse, and Joshi. Well, Mason, that didn't work. Because then that would be Macy. And that's a little girl's name. And it's actually my second daughter's best friend's daughter's name is Macy. So um, I had to come up with different uh, nicknames for him. So I, you know, Baby M, my little monkey, and MJ from you know as he gets older <laughs> so I'm just going to glue down those Kelly Perky letters and I had some left over from the top part of the title and as it dried up I noticed that it didn't matter whether it was Cup of Joe or the lighter brown because it they do fade quite a bit so I was okay with the letters being a little dark you know a shade darker and so I just use what I could use in the part I adore you and now I'm going to use my Stedler marker and what I wanted to do was because the word monkey the type of thickers it is it has stitching in the middle it's a fabric I love that thickers and it has stitching in it so I decided that I was going to use my Stedler marker and do stitching in all the in all the smaller words too just so that it kind of ties the title together and then I'm going to use some enamel dots and I'm going to use them in pink just because I'm on the layout too so I just wanted to put a little bit of pink and but it's mostly you know brown and a little bit of blue and a little bit of pink and now I'm just going to do a little bit of journaling and then I'm going to take out my roller date stamp and I'm going to stamp out September 2013 and I punched it out three times without re-inking it so it kind of fades out and I really like that look now I'm going to take out some brown twine and then I'm going to punch out a few more butterflies out of that pattern paper actually I don't end up using the butterflies that I punch because what I decide to do is just use the butterflies that were already on the layout. So I'm using my American Craft This to That dot adhesive and I love that stuff. It just puts enough um, glue on the twine that I can do the loop-de-loops so that it does the pretend flight of the butterfly. And now I'm going to show you some close-ups and also some still pictures and that's it the page is done but if you want to see more 
uh, still pictures, you can go to Two Peas in a Bucket and Studio Calico. Look in the Members Gallery under Nicole Jones 911. You can also look in the description. I have my Facebook group there. And I upload all my pictures there. And also, uh, you know, hundreds of other people are uploading their layouts. So it's awesome. And also on Pinterest. So thanks for watching. Bye.